Make sure you watch to the end, because I make a mistake, and I wish I wouldn't have done it, but it happened, and I got frustrated. So, let's start the show. Welcome back to Dixon Does It. Today, we're going to be fixing this wall. Uh, let me show you what tools I got. I picked up a mixing bucket. You know, it was like, it was two bucks. Come on, people. Just spend the two bucks. The, the sides are sloped here, so you can take it and whoosh, just like pull your stuff up. I got hawks and trowels. Got a 12 inch trowel. I got a 6 inch spatula knife. And I got a hawk. The hawk, you know, it, it was, it's a good investment. Trust me, if you're going to be doing this much work. Oh, I've got Sacrete Mortar Stucco Mix. The reason I bought this is because I could not find the stuff I wanted, which was a brand called, oh, uh, what, what was it called? Something Light. And it was supposedly for, you know, exactly what I'm doing. So I read the directions. I know, I know, read the directions. Oh, my God. But here it says... Uh, pre-blend and masonry cement, sand, lime, Portland cement. So this is already mixed for me. You know, it's pre-mixed. I didn't have to lay, mix all this stuff up. For laying brick, block, stone, blah, blah, blah. We're not doing that. Building walls, planners, blah, blah, blah. Not doing that. Tuck pointing, not doing that. Repairing. Can also be used as a scratch coat, a brown coat, and a finish coat on stucco walls. What does that mean? So a scratch coat, if you have plaster and lath, is the stuff you put on real quick. And then you push into the gaps in the lath, and then it falls down, and when it dries, it's locked in. See my hand? You push it in, it falls, and it locks it in. Those are called keys. Um, and then... It holds it in. You don't. You don't have to get it straight. Just get it on. Get it smooth. You know, sm kind of smooth. You know, just get it in there. That's your scratch coat because before it dries, you want to take stuff and just make little scratches. So your next coat, the brown coat, which is doesn't have to be brown, but if you add sand to it, it makes it brown. The scratch coat is scratched. So your brown coat can go on, which is your next layer after your scratch coat dries. That one you want to get smooth you know, as smooth as you can, and then let that dry. This is a three-coat system. And then after that, you put a finishing coat on, which you could buy finishing coat. I'm going to use uh, plaster mix, you know, the stuff, the powder stuff that you mix with water, and then you would do drywall with. That's what I'm going to use as my finish coat. I'm not a professional. I may not be doing this right. I've done a lot of research and watched a lot of videos and stuff. You know, I have not talked to anybody, a Mason, because I don't know any Masons. I'm, I'm doing this on my own. So if you're watching this and you have done this and you know what I'm doing wrong, leave it in the comments because, you know, like I said, I've never done this before. But I don't have plaster and lath, so I don't need a scratch coat. I don't need a brown coat because this is already pre-mixed for me. It's got my lime and everything in it. And I'm repairing this over brick. So if you're watching this, and I'm going to put it, you know, I'm going to title this brick so everybody knows that I want to do it over brick. Because I've not seen a lot of videos of people going over brick, except for over in England, sunny, jolly old England, where they have a lot of brick houses, but they have different products and they have different names for everything. So I have no idea what they're talking about. All right. So prep work. What did I do? Well, I scratched as much of this off as I could. All the loose stuff. If it didn't, I wasn't going to force anything to come off. If it's on, it's on. It's good. If you watched one of the other videos, you've seen me doing that. And I took my, my trusty little scraper knife, you know, and went around the edges and took that loose stuff off. Then I took a wire brush, you know, and where are your eye goggles, people? I mean, I had my eye squints on, but they, it was still getting in my eye, so... You know, wear your goggles when you're using a wire brush to clean all this brick off. Another product I used was this. Concentrated Bonding Adhesive. Um, 
basically what it is is a they call it a bonding adhesive but what it really is is a they say PVA they call it other things we were using Elmer's glue what it is is a barrier because that brick is going to suck the water right out of your mortar and it's going to dry too fast and it's going to crack. I'm just going to walk around and look for some plastic while I'm talking here. Um, so yeah, you don't want it to crack. You want it to be, take its time and dry, you know, dry on its own so it'll adhere. And a lot of people say that it helps stick to it, but if you don't have PVA, you can wet your bricks. And that'll, so they're wet. They don't need to draw a lot, of, a lot of the moisture out, but how much water do you put on? Is the brick gonna be too wet that it won't adhere? So this takes all that guesswork out of that. You don't have to really worry about it. So what I did was, you can make a slurry if it's too thick if you're using Elmer's glue. And you could mix it with a little bit of water, paint it on your brick, and it creates a barrier so it won't go on there. What you what I've seen people do is they, they do one layer. I've already done one layer. And then they put water to it, and then they do a second layer, and then wait for it to get tacky. And then once it's tacky, then you can start putting on your your coat, your first coat. And I'm not going to do that. I mean, the purpose of it is so the brick doesn't suck suck it out. I'm not using it as a bonding agent because this should bond to it. There shouldn't be an issue. But I'm not a professional, so we'll see what happens. If it doesn't stick, then I'm wasting, you know, $11 a bag on these $50 50 pound bags. I'll have to bust it all back out and start all over again. But if I learn the hard way and you're watching my video, you're learning from me. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to start laying this plastic down and then we're, I'm going to mix up some and just get to work. All right. So I added too much water to start with. So I had to keep adding and adding and adding, and mixing and mixing. I was using the 12 inch trowel, but that just it got too heavy. So I went back to the six. But you want it the consistency of, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. It's just sliding off of here. So I'm hoping it doesn't slide off my wall. But if you see, I can make... It's not moving. It's not like sliding back down into where it's going to go. So I'm going to go put this on the wall and then I'll... Then if it works, I'll show you what I did. All right. Oh, that, that, corner, that corner a little dark? I don't know. All right. So, first impressions. I've got it all over the floor. This is not plaster. This is hard wall. It's mortar. So, yeah. What we're getting is, you know, we're mortaring everything and I'm hoping it's going to stick. I'm going to let it dry and cure and stuff. But I got to do my plaster over this. This was the first spot I did and I missed a little bit of the brick. And what I'm getting is here, I'm, I'm making a lot of mess, but it's, it's very soupy. But look, it's just sliding off. It's not staying on. It's not plastic. And you can't just smear it on. It'll come off. You have to wiggle your whatever whatever you're going to use to get it on there. I mean, you're, when you put this on, you're supposed to have, they say metal lath. Do you know what metal lath is? I didn't know what metal lath is. Metal lath is chicken wire. Um, a wire fence, you know, the little stuff that you see, you're supposed to connect it to your wall and then put this on and smear it and then it acts as a rebar or something. But we're going to come back in about an hour and we're going to, I'm going to let this dry a little because what I want to do is, 
scrape the high spots. Scrape the high spots off and give me room for... Uh, I guess it's working already. I want to come in and I want to... Oh, can you guys see what I'm doing? I want to make it below the level of the wall. I also want to get it off. If there's anything that I got on the wall, I want to take it off. So I'm going to follow around because I'm, I'm not going to do the whole wall with a finished coat. I'm just going to wash the wall. And then I'm going to get a nice primer to make my paint stick. And a lot of this I'm not even painting because I think I'm going to do a chair rail. It would look nice. Okay. This is what I'm going to... Yeah, it, it's already starting to set up a little bit. I only did half a bag. Here's another thing I learned. Let's put this down. Let's go, let's go talk over here. Another thing I learned. Don't add too much water. Add your water first. But I only wanted to do half a bag. I ended up doing like two-thirds of a bag. So I had to keep mixing to get a consistency that I was happy with. Not too dry, but not too soupy. The, and it, when it was soupy, it was coming off of my knife. What other issues am I running into? A application. Oh my gosh. Like I said, this stuff is sliding right off. So, what? In other videos, you'll watch, and they're, they're starting at the bottom, and they're pushing in and pushing up. Yeah, that's pretty much what you have to do, because if you come in here, and you want to put it on like putty, that just fell off. Well, that stayed on. Why are you staying on now? And Because it, it's probably dried out. Anyways. Yeah. You, you're sl uh, slapping it on the wall? Is, is that... I was taking it, and I was slapping it on the wall, and then doing that little shimmy thing, you know, back and forth to get it on there. I'm missing a couple small spots in there, but I'll hit that with the plaster. All right, I got to go clean these off, because you don't want any, just one little, you think you got it clean, you got one little piece of dry stuff on there, and you go to smear something, and you're going to have a line in it. And a line in it. And a line. You don't want lines in it. So I'm going to go clean these real good. I'll be right back. Alright, so what they mean by scratch coat is when it's dry, not dry, but drying, you can scratch into here and you get your scratches. What I'm doing is bringing this a little smooth with my wall because I don't want any high spots. If you have a high spot, then you're going to have to feather out your finish coat, your plaster, and that's not cool. And it's been about a half an hour, probably an hour since I started. Here's the spot I started on, and it's it's fairly hard, and it's staying, so I think I'm going to finish the rest of the wall. So far, so good. I'm crossing my pants here, so we'll see what happens. Not gonna lie, I got mad. I threw my tools and I had to walk away. I came back, I mixed up a new batch. I made it a little soupier. And amazingly, it's better. It's going on thinner. It's sticking to the wall better. It's not sticking to the trowel. It's not sticking to the hawk any better. It's still sliding off. I'm still getting stuff on the floor, but I'm getting a thinner layer, which is what I wanted in the first place. It's staying a little more pliant. I'm not as angry anymore. Um, so you want it soupier. Here, I'll show you what I mean by soupier. All right. So, I mean, it's it's got the consistency of oatmeal. People say, oh, you want it like peanut butter. But this is what they mean by peanut butter. So they must be buying the stuff that has all the oil on the top and you have to mix it up because, I don't know. This is like slippery oatmeal. So... That's what I'm using. This is actually working a lot better than the stiffer stuff I was doing. I don't have to keep working it to get it, you know, moving. And I got mad mixing it, so I just got my hands in there and mixed it up. Yeah, it might cause cancer in California, so careful with that. Okay, so now that I have my mix soupy, 
and I'm just throwing it on the wall and smoothing it out. It's working way better. I wish I would have done this earlier. So let me grab some. <sighs> grab some. Oh, well, I'm going to mix this up a little bit. It's starting. It can get a little dried out, so you want to keep it moving. Put it on your hawk. This is the best tool I've ever bought. I can't wait to do drywall with this. I'm just going to take a little, throw it at the wall. Take a little, throw it at the wall. Smear it out. It's going to fall on the floor. Make sure you got some paper down or some plastic or something. If you're worried about making a mess, don't do this job. I'm just feathering it out to the edges. Now I'm going to take my 12 inch, where the heck did that go? There it is. I got this. Scrape it flat. You want it indented because you're going to come back and you're going to fill it in with your, with your drywall and stuff. So with your plaster, you just smooth it out a little bit. Done. I'm going to do the rest of this wall. I've got, I may need to go back out for another bag. I bought three bags for a repair job. So do some calculations and it's $12 a bag. I read a review on this stuff that says this guy only gave it four stars because he did a small patch and he bought a whole bag because they don't make small bags. And now he's stuck with like this big old bag of stuff. It costs like 12 bucks, dude. What are you out? Come on, really? And you can't save it. I opened one bag and I think it was bad. The second bag that I opened, it had a big chunk of hard stuff in there. So I think it might've been bad, but we'll find out. I'm gonna keep going with this video and then we'll make a plastering video. And we'll make it two videos because I don't like making long videos. Then they put commercials in them and nobody wants to watch commercials. What's up with that? Off. All right, so I finished with, after three bags, I, I've got maybe less than a quarter of a bag left. And I left that in case my mix was too soupy and I could add more. But I've got it all in there. I'm going to go around with, you know, my knife and, you know, now that it's all drying up, I can scrape it flat. Did you guys see what I was doing? Probably not. It's dark in here. I don't have production money for like a real camera and a real light and stuff. So you're just going to have to, I'm going to have to talk it out most of the time. This little patch we did here, it's, it's concave. I don't know if you can see that it's like in there. I need room. I'm not worried about this stuff. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. Because, I mean, you're just going to be putting plaster over it and you want the plaster to grab on stuff anyways. The plaster is what's going to be smooth. That's the next video. That's not today. No, that's not today because this stuff's got to dry and cure for a couple days. And if that happens, you'll see what happens in the next video. I'll be mad. There are little stuff like this. I didn't fill that in. I just put plaster in there. This one, yes, it goes down to the brick. I'm going to put plaster in there. I'm, I'm going to do a skim coat over the whole wall because... There's, there's cracks, you know, I mean, this cracks nothing, but I mean, I can't even get a fingernail in there, but I can see it. And if I can see it now, I'm going to see it with paint in there. So I learned a lot today. Uh, I've never done this job before. I've done, I've done mortar before, mortar and bricks, um, done mortar at work, you know, just to close up some holes and chimneys and stuff, but I've never done a hard coat over a brick wall. And I don't see a lot of videos on YouTube for old brick walls, you know, so I, I hope you learned a lot from me and my mistakes. You know, like I said in the very beginning that, you know, I wish I would have started with the soupier mix because I would have gotten it done a lot easier, a lot faster, a lot thinner, you know, because I don't, I don't want it thick. It might dry out and crack. Uh, if it does, we'll, I'll let you know in the next video. 
I mean, I mean, you can see my hair. I, I just got mad and, you know, started throwing things and I had to take a break. It's, that's what you got to do. If stuff's just messing you up in the head, you got, got to walk away, clean your tools, um, take a break. You know, it's, it happens. I mean, the, the life of, a uh, DIYer, as you know, everybody calls themselves, is you know, mistake after mistake after mistake, and you got to learn from them. But hopefully, and a lot of these videos that we watch on YouTube, they don't tell you about their mistakes. They tell you, oh, this, you know, they show you the aftermath. But if you see what I'm doing here, and I'm showing you what I'm doing wrong, then you can see that I did it wrong, and you'll know not to go down that path. So, thanks for watching Dixon Does It. Uh, like and subscribe. If you like, then, you know, more people get to see these videos. So, it's always good to do the like button. And it's not hard. It's right down at the bottom. Like, again, thanks. Bye.